Hi everyone, this is Bella Mehta reporting from the room now from New York, uh, and we have with us Dr. Sebastian Satui from the University of Pittsburgh. Welcome, and we'll discuss his poster um, on COVID nineteen and vasculitis. So, what did you? What is the key key findings from your paper, from your yes. abstract? Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mehta, for the invitation to talk about our work. And this is this is this work is part of the efforts of the Global Rheumatology Alliance. So it's using the provider registry from the Rheumatology Alliance, and uh, kind of with, with the goal of 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 most of the studies is basically trying to inform ourselves and our patients of what are their key risk factors and uh, for worse COVID outcomes in patients with different with our conditions, and. Uh, and Particularly in this analysis, what we focused on was patients with vasculitis. So multitude of diagnosis of primary systemic vasculitis and PMR. And the data, the data cut for this um, analysis actually went from April 12 to April, from sorry, from March 12, 2020 to April 12, 2021. With so the full year where the where the, exactly. you know, the pandemic so, was on. That was the full year. And and again, the idea was to describe outcomes in these patients, but more importantly, it will describe factors that were associated with worse outcomes. True. And this, I mean, the Global Rheumatology Alliance has been one of the key uh, players in informing us on what to do during the pandemic. So uh, it's a it, it's a very rich data set. It is. And I think the, the important thing is that uh, it kind of emerged in, in a moment where we had no data and it has continued to actually supply very important data for all of us that uh, continue to be in the frontline care of our patients. But um, I think the one point that we all kind of uh, importantly have to um, mention from, from this registry, as much as all registries, is that there's going to be some kind of biases or, sele- or kind of uh, limitations to extrapolation of the data. So that's why um, I think that's an important point to mention. Again, I think it's something that comes with the, the GRA registry, but it's certainly very uh, prevalent among all registries that have been created, uh, whether with this, within rheumatology, but certainly other, other kind of specialties as well in just whole, the med- whole medical field. So in this abstract, like 952, uh, what were the cases you analyzed? So basically what we looked into is the cases with uh, primary systemic vasculitis, which included based on how the data was collected from, from the registry, ANCA patients, so GPA, EGPA, and MPA, uh, GCA patients, PMR patients, Bichette's, and then there was a group, you know, we have so many conditions within our specialty, we cannot list all of them. Of other vasculitides that were certainly more uncommon, this would include, of course, patients with Takayasu, adult patients that previously had Bichette's, cargolinemia, and so forth. How about like patients like leukocytic vasculitis, like they were gone? They, they, they would have included as well in the, if they were like isolated. The one limitation though, and this is why when we proceeded with the analysis, besides looking into the overall population, we did a specific, um, a disease specific an, uh, analysis, was the fact that uh, for that group of other vascul- uh, their vasculitides, we didn't have a specific diagnosis. So we're talking about at least, you know, I don't know, 10 or so different diagnosis, reason why we didn't proceed because, um, with a further analysis regarding risk factors for that group. And what are the major outcomes that you're looking at from, from COVID-19? So the, the outcome-wise, what we use, similar to, I guess, a lot of this, the clinical studies looking into risk factors, was the this nomen, uh, ordinal COVID-19 severity uh, outcome. So meaning patients require no, no hospitalization, hosp- in this case, hospital, no hospitalization, hospitalization without oxygenation, hospitalization with any form of oxygenation, and then death as a, kind of the final outcome. Yeah. And, and how many patients did you have? So we included 1,202 patients for the overall analysis, but then when we started looking into the specific models, we actually had a little bit over, uh, I think it was 1,040 patients, then we had full data regarding their, their final outcome. And those were the data, those were the patients that were included in the final kind of models. Okay. And what were the key findings? So key findings for overall population were that uh, both, <coughs> sorry, male sex, um, higher doses of prednisone, higher burden of comorbidities, and high disease activity comparing moderate and severe disease activity compared to like either low remission were associated to worse outcomes. And this was in the overall population. The reassuring thing was that patients who were diagnosed by the end of the period, study period, so we divided into three, um, into three different kind of time periods. Uh, the first time period was actually also defined based on um, the recovery data analysis that showed the use of, of 
of prednisone and the benefits of, of glucocorticoids in the treatment of COVID, which certainly changed the, the management of patients with COVID severely. But the reassuring thing was that patients later on actually had a decreased risk uh, for worse outcomes, which is reassuring. And I think, you know, at this point, certainly with other measures and kind of where we are with vaccinations, it's even more, uh, hopefully, kind of we're seeing better outcomes in our patients. So one of the conclusions I see is that patients with uh, GCA or ankle associated vasculitis had worse COVID-19 infections or severe uh, outcomes compared to those in PMR. Uh, was this because of steroid dose or something else? So I think it's, you know, they're ba- certainly very different conditions as well. So we know certain, uh, that patients with ankle vasculitis are going to have a higher incidence of comorbidities, including lung disease, including kidney disease. That was within the ANCA specific analysis was the only comorbidity that was independently associated to a worse risk of outcomes. This kind of deferred from an initial analysis that just showed an association with uh, chronic lung disease. Um, And then GCA. So I think the one thing that we try to point out is that certainly our, our, this registry is prone to selection bias. So more than fixed, say, you know, certainly these are patients that we need to be concerned about more than actually noticing or focusing on the number is the fact that we need to try to address both whatever modifiable risk factors we can, which is, which is sort of also a thin line between patients who we know are going to do worse if they have higher disease activity, but also if, depending on the medications that we use to treat their underlying condition. Uh, so, so I think that's the main take home point is that we know these are patients that are at higher risk, whether it's 20% or not, what I would t- say is that we need to focus on mitigation strategies for these patients. We need to keep talking about vaccination. We need to be talking about post-exposure prophylaxis. And there's now, of course, a lot of talk about pre-exposure prophylaxis in immunocompromised patients as well that we know are going to have, have had a blunted response to the vaccine. So we need to keep these communications and these conversations going with our patients because they are high risk, independent of what is the number. We need to keep enforcing and recommending any mitigation strategy possible as well. True. And that's, I think, I would be, may, make the, the main True. thing. Because when, when somebody just sees the abstract, it's like 15% mortality rate uh, in vasculitis. <laughs> that's alarming. But I think, uh, as you pointed out, this is, um, you know, this is a selection bias too. But but still points out that we need to take care of these patients better and try mitigating the risk factors as much as possible. So thank you so much for your time, Dr. Setui. And for more updates, follow me at Room Now uh, and my Twitter handle is Bella underscore Meta. Thank you.